If you want to make amazing games in verse with the best mechanics you can think of, you are going to need to be able to understand concurrency and time flow. Understanding these principles is the key to creating intricate games such as tycoons, objective based games and more. So in this video, we are going to go over a basic overview of concurrency as well as introducing the suspense specifier, which is the bedrock of concurrency. But before we can get into the deep world of time in verse, we first need to understand two basic principles of how code works in verse. To begin, every single line of code in verse is executed in a sequential manner. This simply means that every line of code will run one after the other in the order you've typed it. So line one runs first, then line two, then line three, etc. Second, all normal code in verse is referred to as immediate. We say it's immediate because your code will complete within one simulation update, which you can just think of as a tick or a frame. Now this means that if I had a function called setup player, all the code inside of that function should finish running within the same or next frame that I call it. Now that's great, but sometimes you don't want to run all your code in a single frame. Let's say for example that you have some function that gives the player gold. We would like to wait 4 seconds before giving the player their gold. Once the 4 seconds are up, we then proceed to give the player their currency, thus completing our function. Now let's actually implement this in verse. I'll get a reference to an item grantor device here, then create the function give player money, which takes in a player. We need some way to wait 4 seconds before granting the player gold, so we use verse's built in sleep function to wait 4 seconds. Then we can use the item grantor to grant the player gold, and we get an error. Remember how we said all normal code in verse is immediate? Well, here we are effectively attempting to pause the code execution for 4 seconds. But this violates the rule that verse code must be executed within a single frame. How can we run a function that takes 4 seconds to complete all within a single frame? The answer is you can't, unless you somehow bend space and time. So to get around this, verse provides us with a special effect specifier known as the suspense specifier. The suspend specifier can be added to a function to create an asynchronous function. An asynchronous function has the special property of no longer having to obey the one frame rule. With this specifier added, this function now has the ability to take longer than one frame to complete. It can take a second, three seconds, a minute, or even an hour. To add the suspend specifier, you begin by typing this left arrow after parentheses, followed by suspends and close with a right arrow. Notice that our error goes away because this is now an asynchronous function. We can take our sweet time to run our code here, so we can take 4 seconds here. So asynchronous functions are cool, but there's an important trait to them that you should know. You can't call an asynchronous function inside another function that does not have the suspend specifier. And this just goes back again to trying to run a function that takes more than a frame to complete within a single frame it's physically impossible. You can only call asynchronous functions inside of other asynchronous functions. Luckily, you'll notice that our onBegin function actually has a suspend specifier, which means that I can call the grant player gold function inside here. I want to bring your attention to the built-in move to function inside of verse. This function allows us to move an object over a period of time. Now, because this involves some period of time, you should be able to identify this as an asynchronous function, which is indeed true if we take a look at the function's definition, we can see that this has the suspense specifier. Here in my onBegin function, I'm going to call move to on two cubes that I've placed in my world. See if you can guess what will happen when I run this code. You'll notice that the second cube begins moving only after the first cube has stopped moving. So remember how we said that all code in verse is executed in a sequential order? Well here, that same principle is being applied. Our first move to function is being called here, but because we run our code sequentially, the second move to will only be called after our first move to complete. And because I set the move to time to one second, our code is effectively suspended for a second here. But what if we wanted both cubes to move at the same time? How can we call the second move to function without having to wait for the first move to to complete? The answer is with concurrency expressions. Concurrency expressions are special expressions that allow us to have full control over how asynchronous functions are executed. 
At the time of this recording, there are a total of five concurrency expressions, which we'll be exploring in much detail in upcoming videos. These concurrency expressions fall under one of two categories, structured and unstructured concurrency. The main difference between structured and unstructured concurrency is that the lifetime of any structured concurrency expression is directly tied to the scope of the function, while unstructured concurrency expressions have a lifetime that is not tied to the scope of the function. In practice, this just means that if we begin a task inside of a function using structured concurrency, like moving an object using the move to for example, that task will only run as long as the function itself is still running. If for whatever reason our function is terminated, then the task will also be cancelled. With unstructured concurrency expressions, we can start tasks without being constrained by the function from which we start our task. For example, if we call move to inside a function using unstructured concurrency expressions and that function is terminated for whatever reason, the move to we started inside it will still continue to run either until it finishes or forever potentially. As a result, this can introduce some weird bugs if you don't correctly keep track of your task, which is why the documentation is advised to stick into structured concurrency whenever possible. Now, if this doesn't make too much sense, don't worry because we'll be exploring many examples when we cover each individual concurrency expression in the upcoming videos, and soon you'll be a master of managing time inside of Verse. But anyways, thanks for watching, as always, I hope this was helpful, and yeah.